Hey folks, David Frost, my strategic forecaster here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, December 14, 2017. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. And today was a down day and it should come as no surprise to anybody. The last couple of days we talked about the fact that the market was not able to close above the 266.80 level, which in a sense they had every opportunity to do it both days, yesterday and on Tuesday, and they neglected to do that. And to me that was a signal of the fact that the market was getting a little overextended and probably wanted to come down a little bit. And today the market began to come down a little bit, down four tenths of one percent. It's not a big decline by any stretch. However, we are stretched on the upside, and I'll reiterate one more time that all we're really doing is resetting, coming back toward home base, or letting home base come up toward price. Home base is the 20-period moving average. The market does not like to get too far extended from home base. So what happened today is we came down a little bit, and we'll get to the other markets in a couple of minutes, and there were some telltale signs. The market's going to come down a little bit, probably some more over the next day or maybe even into next week. And once we get to home base or potentially home base might rise a little bit, but we may come down to the 262.75 area that we discussed last night. And that would be a good reset for the market. It wouldn't break the uptrend at all. And we could either have the Santa Claus rally at the end of December or we can set ourselves up for a rally into next year. Either way, it's too early to tell right now. Let the market come back toward home base as we discussed, and we'll just take it one day at a time. And you can see here, I'm going to go down to a 10-minute chart, and you can see that the market finished near the lows of the day again. We did that yesterday. This is the last candle yesterday. Remember, yesterday we had about seven, seven and a half million shares in the last candle of the day. That was a down candle. And that candle was the candle that they drove lower to close below the 266.80. Today, we rallied up above it a little bit and then broke down. And you can see here that once we got below that level, the market basically melted away for the remainder of the trading session, finishing near the lows of the day. That's a sign that there's likely more downside coming when we finish near the lows of the day. It's not an exhaustion move, meaning this is not an ending move. To me, this was a signal that there's more downside coming. When we look over at the IWM, the IWM, and we were making the case that this was a bearish pattern, right? So we had a down move, we were making a bearish wedge pattern, and we discussed that this normally finishes in another down move. Today, we came into the 50 period moving average, finishing below the 20, and this is the first time that we finished below the 20 period moving average uh, since all the way back in the middle part of November. So we now finished below the 20 today. We touched the 50, bounced off of it a little bit, and you'll notice where we are. We're slightly below the upsloping trend line that's drawn over from the monthly chart as a refresher. This trend line that we've been discussing literally for years connects the lows all the way back from October of 2011, and you can see us hugging that line, and we closed above that line the last few months. That's a very important and bullish sign, and now technically we're pretty much right on that line. When you look at the monthly chart, looks like we're over the line. When you look at the daily chart, looks like we're below the line. The line is not to the penny. It's not an exact science. It's more of a guideline. It's a trend line that we're using as a guideline. But you can see here that that line is extremely important. You can see how we traded uh, above it here, around it here, got back below it. We gapped above it. Now we're back to that line. That line is extremely important. And what I'll say about it is, that if, in fact, we close the month of December back below that line, that's going to be important for the markets. If we finish above this trend line, that's going to keep the long-term uptrend intact in the IWM. As we know, the IWM is my favorite leading market indicator on the up and the down side. I'm taking my cues from the IWM just about each and every day. 
If we continue down farther in the IWM, and I think we will, there'll be two levels of important support areas. The first one is 147.25. If we get a sell over the next couple of days, the likely scenario is we will find at minimum of some short-term support, if not long-term support, at 147 and a quarter. If we sell harder and we come through the 100 period moving average, this upsloping purple trend line, we still will find support around that 144 and a quarter. Maybe it's 144.50. Maybe it's 144 area. But in this general zone will be the secondary level of support. 147 and a quarter, 144 and a quarter, give or take 25 or 50 cents on either side. Those are your important levels of short-term and potentially longer-term support for the IWM. The transports. Now, we've talked about the transports. Again, same scenario. The market, meaning the transports, are overextended on the upside. They're overbought. And what we've discussed is that the transports need to also come back toward home base. And you can see the 20 period moving average, which is the red upsloping trend line sloping up into price. And here today, we had a down move in price down about 70 points. Uh, we were down a little bit more earlier, but finished down about 70 points, about seven tenths of 1%. And we're allowing the 20 period moving average or home base to come up into price. And price is starting to come down toward home base. Either way, even if we go sideways and let the 20 period moving average come up into price, that will be fine. This is not a bad pattern. This is not a market that's in any trouble. This is in an uptrend. All we're doing is working off some of the, and I'll call it a parabolic move, but it's an overbought condition that we're just working off in the transports, letting price come back toward or letting home base come up toward price. One way or the other, that's really all that's going on in the transports. The uptrend is not going to be broken anytime soon unless we had one heck of a sell on our hands. I'm not anticipating that. I think this is just a minor corrective pattern that's beginning. I don't expect it to last more than a few days. The financials. We've been talking about the financials for the last couple of days. Same thing. It was overextended. Too far away from home base. Yesterday we had a nice reversal candle. We talked about it last night. And today we had some follow through to the downside. And you can see as we're getting closer to home base, we should begin to find a level of support. In the XBD, here are our short term and what I believe to be a longer term area of support. 254.75 could be 255, give or take. And then 248 if we should sell farther the 248 level would be a wonderful buying opportunity why because you can see all of this chart consolidation in here this is the charts way of telling us that this general price area is extremely important also where we broke out from if you look here this was essentially a breakout point okay we had a little bit more of a consolidation point and this is where we had the last breakout and you know what I always say, markets love to come back and check in at former breakout and former breakdown areas. That's exactly what I think would happen if we got all the way down to the 248 level in the XBD or the broker dealer index. In the XLF, which is the financial spiders, this is the or these are the corresponding levels, $27, $26.50, and $26. These are your support levels on the downside. If we get a hard sell, the 26 level will be a buy with both hands. And you know what I always say? That without the financials, the market's not going to make a heavy run to the upside without participation from the financial sector. And the same thing goes for the downside. The market's unlikely to have any kind of a hard sell on the downside without participation from the financial sector. Today, we had some participation from the financial sector, but they weren't down all that much. You know, Goldman Sachs was flat. JP Morgan was down a little less than 1%. Bank of America was down a third of a percent. So basically, they're holding up fine. There's nothing really wrong with the financials. All this is doing, just the same as all the other markets, it's coming back toward home base. 
That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. If something further develops, we'll address it at the time, but that's all I see here today. The gold market didn't do much today. Yesterday we had that big move, and today we had more of a quieter day. The reason this candle looks the way it does is because this reflects the pit session close, and then after the pit session, the market opens again in the Globex session, and this reflects from that point to where we are today. So uh, the market was basically, for all intents and purposes, for the most part, flat today. Not much going on, but the gold market looks like it wants to make a run for this red candle high. That comes in at 1266 spot 80. That's the next major area of resistance. You can see here that we have the 20 period moving average sloping down into price. You have a confluence of moving averages. This represents a lot of overhead resistance. So what will happen is if we can get through this red candle high, for example, we're still going to have a ton of overhead resistance right up in this 1278 to 1281, 82 area. Right up in here, a lot of chart resistance, a lot of what's called overhead resistance. So while gold is maybe putting in a bottom, maybe was just oversold, okay, we're not out of the woods yet. We could certainly run into a lot of resistance and come right back down. So there's a lot of work to do in gold on the upside from where we are right here, right now. Silver is pretty much the same routine. If we can get up to this red candle high, which represents $16 spot 38, if we can get up there, that will be the first hurdle that we have to get through. It's not going to be so easy. By the time they get up there, you're going to meet the 20 period moving average. That's going to represent some overhead resistance. And then there's a pivot here. And then there's a huge one here. This is where your real overhead resistance is. We're a far cry from there, so we don't need to discuss that just yet. The level up here is going to be a lot of chart resistance, a lot of overhead resistance in the silver market. So we're not out of the woods yet. This could be, and the jury's still out, it could be just an oversold bounce. We'll find out soon enough, but we need some follow-through to the upside. What we need is a close above yesterday's high in both these markets in gold and silver getting a close above yesterday's high will give us the sense that we're getting some follow through to the upside without that taking place this could be just a dead cap bounce the jury's still out we'll see what happens over the next day or two we'll also cover gdx tonight yesterday we had that tremendous update in gdx right into the 20 period moving average. Today we had basically a do-nothing day. The market finished where it opened, and that's not a bad thing. So the market is potentially consolidating after the big up move yesterday. More likely than not, that was a bottom in GDX for a while. When you get one of these large green up candles or a large down red candle like this one all the way over here, that's usually the sign a, a large down red candle is usually the sign of lower prices coming and a large green up candle like this specifically at lows on charts is generally a sign that a bottom is in and we're more likely than not to consolidate for a few days build some energy before taking another run up to the next level which will be right here that's going to be your next major area of resistance 2275 in that neighborhood that's going to present some overhead resistance but the market's going to need to pause and consolidate for a while build some energy to get up to that level that's the likely scenario but when you see these big up days like this it's generally not going to reverse in most cases nothing's a hundred percent but the majority of the time way more often than not you're not going to see a quick reversal of an update like this from yesterday crude oil crude oil could be stuck in the mud right here we came up into the 20 period moving average and that's where we stalled out today we did close on the highs of the day or close to the highs of the day or that's where we are now but we're not out of the woods yet so this is essentially making a bearish pattern if you will it's more of a wedge pattern and we could still come down farther i think this still 55 dollars would represent a pretty good level of support if that didn't hold we'll come down to some of the other levels we discussed last night namely 53 and a quarter would be one level beneath that you have the 100 period moving average at about 52 and a half 
that would be a safety net as well. But I think the $55 level, which also meets this upsloping trend line, so if we came into that level, that would be an opportunity for a long trade in crude. I'm not sure we just cut through that like a hot knife through butter. It's unlikely. You also have the 50-period moving average sloping up into price right here. But we've got to get back above in order to keep the bullish short-term picture intact. We've got to get back above the 20-period moving average. Right now, as long as we consolidate below the 20, if we do, then the likely story is that we have another leg down. But still today, as it stands now, 55 would be a level of support. If we consolidated for a larger period of time, that would diminish the importance of $55. So we'll see what happens. We'll take it day by day. The bond market. Here we go. So we're now back above the important 153.22 level. We had that tip off up here. Then we had the rope-a-dope down into the 50-period moving average. We talked a number of times that, to me, that was a tip-off. The day we closed above this level of 153.22, this day right here, that's the day I said that's the tip-off that higher prices are coming. And we had a little bit of a downturn, worked off some of the short-term overbought condition. I mean, in just a few days, we went from down here to up here. Then we pulled back. That was just a normal garden variety retracement. If I measure it out, it's probably a 618 retracement. In fact, let me do that. Yeah, for the most part, it was a 618 retracement, a little bit deeper than that, but not by much, into the 50 period moving average. And then we took another leg higher where we are now. Now we're back above that important level. In my opinion, and I've been saying this for quite some time, I think we go higher. I think we test the double top area, maybe even pierce through it a little bit. And I think that represents an opportunity and we'll have to see what happens when we get there. But if we get a signal of a reversal around that double top area, that may represent a wonderful long-term selling opportunity in bonds. The dollar, the dollar is pretty much languishing. Now we're sandwiched right in between the 50 and the 20 period moving average. Down day yesterday. Uh, we'll see if that was just a pullback and that would mean it potentially could be an ABC pattern. So we could have an A, the B leg, and then a C leg. That is possible. That would lead us up into the 200 period moving average maybe stall out here at this double top area. But if that's the case, the official completion of an ABC would be if we get above the high of the A leg that's right in here. So we'll see. This could have been just a pullback yesterday on the Fed announcement. We have all markets move in and around the Federal Reserve announcement. Bonds, the dollar, the stock market, uh, the metals market, crude oil, everything pretty much moves in around the Fed announcement. It's an excuse to move markets. So the dollar took a dip down, uh, was supported by the 20 period moving average, and we'll find out if that's just a garden variety retracement or an ABC pattern in play. And we'll see if we take another leg up for that C leg to complete the pattern. And with that, it's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss tonight. So we'll give it a wrap here. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.